Welcome to Real Money Talks. Real strategies from the money makers and the world changers that you can use to make millions, keep those millions, multiply your wealth, and build your team. Here's your host, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View, Laurel Langmire. Hi, this is Laurel. Welcome back to Laurel's Real Money Talks, a podcast that talks about how to make money, how to keep it, how to invest it with a team, and keep this cycle of wealth happening your entire lifetime with you and your family. I have Lorraine on with me today. She's wrote extraordinary books. Well, first of all, tell us how you started your career, Lorraine, and really, like, what's the thing you do that supports people? Yeah, well, I mean, I started my career as kind of an odd thing. I was living and working overseas and had just come back from Saudi Arabia. And believe it or not, at that time, they paid us in cash. So I had all this cash, I mean, literally cash in a bag. And I said, what am I going to do with this? And uh, I answered an ad uh, in the paper for a financial advisor, and it kind of went from there. So it it was just an odd coincidence. But I found that, you know, I really... I've always had this interest in helping others and and helping people to make sure that they're living the life they want. And this was a good vehicle for me to do that. So that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> so then tell us about your book. So you wrote a book, Bozos, Monsters, and Whiz Bangs. Tell me about yeah. those. Well, yeah, I you know, I titled the book. It, it's a kind of tongue in cheek. It's what I call some really bad advisors out there. And I basically wrote it because I was so frustrated from hearing the horror stories from people who had come to me for help and about their terrible experiences with with advisors and my industry in general. I'm like, you know, this really doesn't have to be this way. And we can make this better and really help people without you know having to be such jerks about it. So I wrote the book. It's full of anecdotes and real true life stories from these people who came to me for help. Obviously, the names have been changed to protect the innocents, but I really thought it was important to help others avoid the pitfalls that happen if you do hook up with the wrong advisor and uh, it's not working for you money wise. So there's lots of good advice in there. Well, and the thing too, Lorraine, is you know, we teach off Wall Street, right? So most financial advisors, you know, take people to bonds and mutual funds, high fees, high taxes. Most clients have no idea the fees and taxes they're paying because most people don't want to learn. They just want to pass off their money. I call it park and pray. So yeah, <laughs> you and I, you and you and I both know working with the wrong advisor. I mean, call it Lehman Brothers in the past. I mean, call it whoever took your money and then they're not accountable. In fact, You'll like this, Lorraine. Maybe you'll have to be in part of the book. A really good colleague of mine, we want to write a book called The License to Steal because so many advisors have a license yeah. who are not financially literate. They really aren't caring. They're there for the fees and the structure and kind of the safety of a Schwab and a Fidelity. So just talk about, again, more pain points on the wrong advisor. I mean, I could go on forever, but I want to hear that from you. And then just working in those really, you know, what I call extra traditional structures, which I think are wrong too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that the industry just has a really bad reputation and deservedly so, because a lot of advisors are out there just out for themselves. They just want to get whatever they can from the client. And there's really no concept of helping people, you know, kind of coach them and guide them through all these different financial decisions that they have to make throughout their lives. So I start the book with a story about Nurse Betty, who was using this advisor and she came in to me with a stack of confirms. I mean, I think it was literally seven inches high. And she said, look at this. I don't understand a word this guy's saying to me. I don't understand what he's doing with this account. And of course, I'm I'm just appalled because she wasn't making any money, but the what the broker was making great commissions on, you know, trading and over trading her account. And you know, it's that kind of thing. And when I dug into who this person was, I found out, you know, a couple of uh, years prior to her working with him, he was a manager at Arby's or one of those fast food restaurants. So uh, you can't always be sure that you're getting good advice. And 
you know, I have a whole little handout, which your uh, listeners are welcome to download on my website called Seven Warning Signs You're Working with the Wrong Advisor. It's oh, that's on, a great one. Say that yeah, one more time. That's awesome. Yeah. Seven Warning Signs You Are Working with the Wrong Advisor. And you can get that through betterfinancialdecisions.com or bozosmonsterswhizbangs.com. It'll, it's available free to download. But, you know, there are just so many things you have to look at and be concerned about because you're right. A lot of the advice out there is not really beneficial to folks. And the whole thing that we try and do with my firm is give value to people's lives. Because if we're not doing that, then we're not earning our money. That's how I work. Yeah. Interesting. So, like, everybody's got their process, right? Because we do makeovers and gap analysis, and everybody's got got their process of how they, I'm going to say, extract financial pain from people. Tell us a little bit about yours. We have a program that we've designed called Financial Wellness for Life. And it's really a different approach to what a, a typical financial advisor will do because it is a very holistic kind of wealth or money management oversight program. And we really think of ourselves more as coaches or guides than we do investors because invest that's only one small part of the entire process. But this encompasses everything from, you know, a deep dive into a financial plan analysis, a roadmap, but also things like investments, cash flow management, insurance reviews, tax planning, and then end of life decisions that have to be made. So it really touches upon almost every financial aspect of your life. And that's just the way we look at things. I, I don't know how you can figure out how to invest if you don't know what you want that money to do for you. So we have a saying at the firm, you know, what's money for but to live the life you want? And that's kind of how we approach it. You know, what do you want to do? And then let me see if I can help you figure out how to make things work so that you can get where you want to go. So you mentioned a few things and, you know, I'm actually going to do some online course like program on, you know, a man is not a plan because a lot of women leave all their financial decisions. And then when, you know, especially if they're the same age, the men typically pass before them and now they're financially bound. Prenuptials, I'm glad that you know, you brought up end of life decisions, planning for a will and trust. Like to me, those are life crushing, family crushing decisions, you know, Things that happen to their entire state if people don't manage it. What are some of those big ones that you see consistently in your clients that, you know, on the podcast, if you're listening, money affects you every day, every day. Yes. And if you're not paying attention, I mean, there's not a decision. You're, you're spending money. You're going to Pete's or Starbucks. You're spending money. Make a decision. I mean, it's down to that simple stuff to big stuff. And to me, the big ones are lack of generational planning, lack of marriage planning. You know, oh, right. I know another one. My new one too, Lorraine, I'm going to do is called Money is Not Marriage. Because it drives me crazy yeah. when people bind each other to not be in action because one person's more scared. So what do you see? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're just listing everything that we see all the time. And one of the most dramatic and horrible things is that people come to us after the death of a spouse or a partner, and they come in with, you know, boxes, bankers' boxes of papers. And they're like, I don't know what any of this is. I can't figure any of this out. The estate is a mess. Things are all over the place. They find old stock certificates in drawers and they find bank accounts and guns in a safe somewhere. I mean, it's just crazy how often people do not organize things for their lives and for their heirs. And that just has disastrous consequences. We want to help our clients avoid doing it. I, I mean, we are really talking the same language here because. I see that kind of thing all the time. And most advisors don't really know what to do in those circles because all they know is like, oh, let's buy this or let's buy that. But they don't really take into consideration what impact some of these decisions will have on the people in the future and also with how they manage things during their lives and then beyond. Your money after life is something we call it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it's it's a serious problem. And, you know, marriage money problems and marriage money problems when going through a divorce, 
we have a, an advisor on the, in the firm who is an absolute expert in uh, divorce financial planning because attorneys don't know. And half the time, the spouses don't know what each other has or what it all means or how to divide it fairly. So there are just so many things in life that are touched by money and, and the decisions you make around money. You need guidance. You need help. And whether it's through a class like you offer or, or uh, through an advisory firm like mine, it's not something you can really do on your own without some guidance. That's how I feel about it. And so what are the big mistakes that you see? Because just what you said triggered another whole question, which is the amount of people who try to do this stuff by themselves, that they're insane. I mean, you don't try to do a surgery by yourself, right? You listen to your doctor. So why don't you listen to money experts? I mean, it drives me crazy. I mean, people say, I just can't be bothered. I don't have time. It's like, you're spending money every day. So that's what I see when people don't get help. They just kind of, Here's the way I describe it. I said, it's like you have five Lego sets and you throw all the pieces in the middle and you don't have the instruction book, but we do, right? You're using pieces from a truck that's supposed to go on an airplane, supposed to go on a boat. Like you don't know what the hell you're doing. So you just keep struggling, struggling versus stop and get help. So, I mean, that's what I see. I just, they try to bandaid it together. I mean, that is just absolutely so true. And I think that something that people discount a lot and don't realize is that when you're trying to do this stuff yourself, your emotions get in the way. You are too close to the situation. You cannot see the forest for the trees. You have no perspective. And so what happens, and this is really the biggest mistake that I see people make, is that they panic. And so you've got a market downturn and they're like, sell everything. I've got to get out of here. I can't take it anymore. Or there's some political change, you know, a presidential election. Recently, I had clients who came in who said their advisor recommended that they sell everything out after the election in 2016. Now, you know, we have clients from all over the political spectrum. So I'm not, you know, I don't have a dog in this fight, so to speak, but I'm just saying that you do not make financial decisions based on some type of, you know, scary news that's out there. And this advisor for this couple told them, yeah, sell everything else out. That's what I'm going to do. And of course, 2017 was one of the best stock market performances that we've had in decades. So that kind of panicky, that kind of knee jerk reaction is really, you know, one of the things that I think an advisor or a guide or a coach can help you prevent yourself from doing. Because a lot of times, once you're out, you don't get back in and you don't know when to get back in. And so, you you know, it's a double problem. You've compounded the problem and you end up selling exactly. a little high. <laughs> exactly. So talk about your process. So when a client calls you up and starts with you, you know, talk a little bit about the profile and the assessment and how you go through that. First of all, we don't invest any money until we understand who the client is. So we have a process where we begin talking about, you know, what's the purpose for this money? What kind of life do you want? What kind of retirement do you envision? Where do you see your values? What is most important to you in life? Because again, until I can understand who you are, I don't even know where to begin to help you figure out your financial situation. So after we kind of have that, you know, deep conversation, we get to know you, then we'll sit down and do a formal comprehensive financial plan, give you some kind of a roadmap and analysis. Then we start talking about how do you want to invest this money? Now, a lot of our clients have investments in all kinds of things. And they have small businesses, they have real estate. We actually work with a client who had a lot of property that he, in which he grew trees to sell. So oh, I it, love that. I know. I know. And we had to kind of project what these trees would be worth, you know, 10, 20 years down the road, because that was a big part of his investment portfolio. So once we go through that and kind of have a real understanding of who the person is, how they need that money to work for them, then we can put together an investment plan incorporating all the different things that they do, uh, whether it's, um, you know, stocks and bonds with us or, as I said, real estates or small businesses or whatever. And then we work cash flow management, estate planning, insurance review, 
et cetera, and end up to, you know, these kind of end of life decisions. Every year, that whole cycle is revisited as needed in those different portions of their financial lives. And I think a big part of what we do is we spend time problem solving. You know, I want to do this. How can I get that done? How can I accomplish that? And that's what we do for our clients. Awesome. So for somebody who doesn't have, I'm going to go two ways. If somebody doesn't have a lot of money, what do you do with them to get started? Because I I don't care how much money people have, they need to start and at least have some plans. So as they make money, they do it right. And what do you do with people who come that are higher net worth? Because it is, I mean, what we do, as you know, is very different. I'm curious what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, for for people who are just starting out, we'll give them some basic guidance because if there's not a lot to work with, there's not much we can do yet. So we, you know, do recommend that they educate themselves, take classes, go to webinars, uh, and we're we're doing a webinar on the thirty first, but we're we're doing them regularly on a lot of different aspects of the planning situation. And so I think it's easy to educate yourself, but you have to take the time to do it. And you have to start somewhere. So start saving something. And once you have built up kind of a little nest egg to cover emergencies, like maybe the government decides to shut down and you don't have any money coming in, it would be good to have six months worth of living expenses in the bank. And that's something that, you know, we recommend to people who are just getting started. For those who have some assets to work with, they can go through our full program and uh, we can help them with that from that point of view. Other than that, it's education because the more you know, the better educated consumer you can be for all the different aspects of financial services that are out there. Yeah. And then what about the higher end folks? What's the, the most alternative? I mean, that's what we provide a lot of those alternative education and options, but do you do any of the alternatives? So you mean what, like real estate and Bitcoin and this kind of thing as well? or Yes. No, we handle people's conservative portion of their portfolio. So we, we mostly concentrate on, you know, you need a little portion of it over here that you can be sure is going to be there. And then you can make money on other things, but experiment with them. And, you know, we leave that to, to people who are more expert in that regard. So we'll recommend other places to go if they're interested, more speculative or more alternative type investments, because we don't, we don't focus on that. That's not our area of expertise. So why not, why go with us? What I'm no, doing. That's good. <laughs> no, but I like, I, I like that yeah. you, you, know, you know, you're good at and what you're not. What about kids? What do you do? Would you do some family planning for any we of the kids? Do. Are there any accounts or what do you do? We do. We, we have accounts for, from kids who are, you know, babies through, early adulthood where they're just starting to save or they're, they have a little account set aside because we just think it's really important to educate the children of our clients as well as our clients. And we bring them in as often as possible because another big problem we see is that families don't talk about money. And so something happens to mom and dad and the kids are like, huh, what? You know, they don't know where anything is. They don't know how to, how to deal with it. They don't know who to contact. And so we always ask our clients to also fill out a client uh, contact form so that if they start getting a little wonky in their old age, you know, start maybe wanting to give money to that Nigerian prince that they found online, uh, we have someone to call. Usually that's a kid. (laughs) Yep. So Lorraine, tell us, um, I know we're ending our podcast, but talk a little bit about how people can get a hold of you so they can get a consult with you. And where can they follow you on social media? Yeah, I mean, we have a couple of websites, but I think the best one for your listeners to go to would be betterfinancialdecisions.com. It contains our books, our blog, our articles that we've written for like Kiplinger's or Forbes or other national media. And then there's just tons of valuable information on there, as well as our contact information. We have a podcast at the firm as well, and we have a webinar called Confident Retirement in Uncertain Times. And so that's available to anybody to attend as well as uh, downloads, such as I I mentioned, the seven warning signs, you are working with the wrong advisor. So that Better Financial Decisions website has lots, 
lots of great information. Awesome. Well, Lorraine, thank you for being on Laurel's Real Money Talks. And those of you that are out there, if you uh, want to drop a comment, ask a question, ask for a private session with me, go to asklaurel.com, A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L.com, and visit our new website, integratedwealthsystems.com, and check out our event schedule. We're going to be in San Diego. We're going to be in Salt Lake. We're going to be in Vegas a lot because of our cannabis, crypto, and blockchain conversations. And uh, where else are we going to be? We're going to Phoenix. And just stay tuned. A lot going on. Extraordinary year. Lorraine, thank you. Happy New Year's to you and your family. And we'll all talk soon. All the same to you. And thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Real Money Talks podcast. Your host has been Laurel Langmire, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View. Want to learn more about off Wall Street investing, tax strategies, and multi-million dollar business strategies? Visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast for past episodes, show notes, and resources. For some special wealth building gifts only for Laurel's podcast listeners, visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast gifts. Do you have a burning question for Laurel? Visit asklaurel.com to submit your question, and it may just be covered on a podcast episode. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to get new episodes every week. Every week.